So because we're using the dual Phantom, Aeromotive suggested that I pick up one of these, which is their jet siphon valve. Okay, so this works for Phantom systems. You can use it in dual tank systems. If you wanna have one fuel pump and draw from a second tank, you can use this. So basically what you do is you put take this, this works great for like C10s with saddlebags. It literally it lists saddlebag in the part number. You got a, some, a gasket, you got this little siphon valve deal, and then you have the tubing. And this is, mag is magnetic. So you put this inside your tank on the cool side. So on our, well, I'll show you here in a minute on our tank. So the, the original Phantom is mounted on the driver's side. So I would put this in the rear on the passenger side. And what this does is it ensures that your fuel pump always has access to fresh, cool fuel. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize with EFI systems is that fuel pumps need to be cool. An external fuel pump does not have fuel all around it keeping it cool. So anytime you have your return system dumping in close to where your fuel pickup is, you actually are heating up the fuel in that area in your tank. So you need cool fuel. That's where this comes in, in our particular system. So this installs into this, and this will go on the opposite end of the tank in the deepest part. So on our GS tank, the original Phantom that I installed is on the driver's side. So this will go on the passenger side, and that will give the pump cool fuel at all times. This isn't a return system, it's a returnless because we're running at PWM, so we don't have as much issue with heating up the fuel, but if you had a big pump and you're running return style, you're always heating up the fuel because it runs all the way up to the engine, comes all the way back, it gets hot, the pump itself heats up the fuel. Warm fuel, especially when it gets hot, can actually cavitate in your pump and destroy your pump. So you always wanna have cool fuel. This helps you get there. So this is going to help ensure that our dual Phantom always has a good solid supply of fuel even when the level of the fuel is below a quarter of a tank. Typically on this car, I don't do that. If you have an in-tank fuel pump, you really should never run your tank below a quarter of a tank because the fuel is what cools the pump. So your pump is going to get hotter because the bulk of it is hanging out of the fuel. So you always wanna keep at least a quarter of a tank in your uh, fuel cell or your fuel tank. And this right here ensures that if you do get to that point, you will have a steady flow of fuel into your baffle. And that's the siphon kit. Both of these are going in our tank. This particular part does not go in the tank but it is part of your fuel system. And this is a really neat part, and I'm so glad that Aeromotive created this. One of the things that is almost universal in LS swaps is the Corvette filter regulator. It is ubiquitous, everybody uses it, but most of the ones that are coming into the United States these days are Chinese. If you go buy one, chances are you're gonna have to buy two or three just to get one that actually works. I personally, on an LS swap we did a couple years ago, I bought four of them and none of them worked and I ended up changing to a completely different system. They leak, they have some real issues. And so Aeromotive came up with this and this works really well for LS swaps, but it's also really good for LT swaps if you're gonna do static pressure and not a PWM system like what we're using on our GS. So let me show you this bad boy. This is part number 13146. And this is Aeromotive's filter regulator. So this is a giant filter. It is, uh, let's see, um, <clears throat> I don't know what the micron is on it. Let's find out real quick. What's really cool is that you can actually use whatever filter you want. Um, so they have, Aeromotive has uh, a 10 micron cellulose, 10 mi micron microglass, 
40 micron stainless and 100 micron stainless. So for a pre-filter, you would use a 100 micron. And for post-filter, you're gonna use 40 or 10. Most people use 10. The lower the micron number, the better the filtration. So 100 micron is much bigger, 10 micron is much smaller. So this right here, you run this from your tank in here, this is pump side, out here, that's your regulator, okay? And that's your output to the engine and that is your uh, return line back to the tank. So the thing I love about this, one, it's aeromotive, which is pretty much the best you can get in fuel systems. It's rebuildable. This 10 micron filter, uh, this is a cellulose filter. It works really, really well. You can switch it out for a 40 or a 100 if you're using a pre-filter. But for this particular setup, this is a post filter because you're regulating it. So you would want to use a, a 10 micron on this. So basically your flow from your fuel pump goes in on this side. Your output is on this side and these are dash 10s, so they're big. You don't have to use it that big, but if you have say an A1000 and you're running big horsepower, this will work for you and you and that's all you need. You're running something that's you know 400 horse or 300 horse and you want good filtration and you want adjustability, this will still work. So that's your engine side, that's your return side back to the tank and that's a dash six and it's all adjustable and you can even use this for boost referencing if you have a boosted car. Uh, so this little deal right here, this little vent, you can take that out and use that port for boost reference. And it's re the regulator's rebuildable. So everything that you need is right here. This car is using a PWM system, so we don't need a filter regulator because it's regulated by PWM. However, if at any point we decided to change this, this is what we will go with. This is gonna go into uh, our Mercury Comet project, which is twin turboed. So we're gonna put this up, but I just wanted to show it to you because it's a really cool piece. And it's not cheap, you know, it's aeromotive, so it's good quality, but that also means that it's not the cheapest out there. So this guy right here uh, is 250 bucks. And frankly, dealing with the problems that I've had with those Corvette filter regulators, you spend 250 bucks, you're done, you're adjustable, and you've got a, a better quality filter that's rebuildable. It's just a no-brainer. So we're gonna put this up and get started on our tank. Now, because we are using this jet siphon, we have to come in and modify this. So what we've gotta do is actually bring this guy in here, okay? And this will replace one of these and this will go over to the other side of our pump of our tank all right so now i gotta install this siphon tube so this is the front of the tank and it sits in the car like this okay but this is the lowest portion so there's no reason to put the siphon up here because it's not gonna have that much fuel in it i'm gonna put the siphon end all the way over here. Now, because this is a metal tank, this magnet will be just fine. If you have a poly tank or aluminum or something like that or stainless, that's where uh, the little, I don't know where it went. There's a little uh, magnet plug that you can put on the underside, outside, uh, to hold and locate this. So all I'm gonna do is slide this in here and go up and over our baffle that we installed earlier. So we're gonna take this and I'm gonna get this as far down over here as possible. I can't get my arm all the way in. It's just not possible. So we're gonna do the best that we can. But the idea of this is so that during hard cornering or hard acceleration, 
when fuel is flopping around, sloshing around in the tank, you always have a solid source of fuel. The original pickup is right here, and that's a pretty decent spot, so I could use that. If I can get it further over here, that's what I'm gonna do. Ooh, I got an idea. I have an idea. I have a solution. I knew I would think of something. Hold on. So what I have here is some uh, 18 gauge ground wire. I'm going to feed that into this vent hole and then I'm going to reach in and see if I can fish this out. That should be more than enough. I'm going to go ahead and stand the tank up and I'm going to tilt it over this way. Then I should be able to reach in here. Yeah, perfect. Now I got the wire. Okay, so, so now I need the loose end. Okay, right there, got it. So this is a, there's a little, this is a pinch clamp. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna strip this back a little bit, okay, to get to the wire, all right? And I'm going to slide that through that pinch clamp and I'm just gonna very loosely, very, very loose, just like one little twist, just so it doesn't come off uh, and I can get it if it snags on the, uh, let's see here. Then I'm gonna start pulling this through. Okay, I'm gonna push this down. I'm gonna keep feeding it. Okay, now I pulled that off. That magnet's automatically going to fall to the bottom of the tank and lock in place. Uh, it should have rolled over and laid flat, so we should be good now. Next thing, this comes with this little spring here, okay? And this is designed to go inside this tube and keep it from pinching and collapsing when it's going, making its, its way around the baffle and into the pump. So I'm gonna put this, uh, this is our pump. I wanna orient it the way it's gonna be in our car, which is like that. So I know that this right here is on this side and I need about that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right here. So next I take this spring. So the spring, you wanna spin this counterclockwise so that that little spring does not uh, stab your, uh, your tube. And you're just gonna push this in here. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little lube. Uh, I'm gonna hit that tube just a little bit with this. That way, it this will, yeah, that helped. So this will slide in there a lot easier. Just work that in. And then I'm gonna take, just gonna take my uh, extension, try to push this down just a little bit more, if I can. There we go. Okay, just like that. Then I can take my baffle and I can push my baffle back into place. I'm not cutting or notching the baffle at all. All right, now the Jet Siphon Kit does come with new nylock nuts and nylons, nylon washers, so that you can install them on your studs and, and not have to worry about the nuts coming off. We're going to save those for our the uh, the single 340 if we when we reuse that later on. All right, so I'm going to slip this over here. Make sure I have the right socket. Now we're ready to install this. I'm going to go ahead and pull this gasket off. I don't know if you, if it's a good idea to reuse it. Um, you probably could, but I'm not going to take that risk because I have a new one. I've got two of them, so I don't need to take that risk. Now, when you take this off, your your ring may drop out, so you got to hold on to it. Take our new 
gasket. This gasket will fill up to a quarter inch uh, rib, which is about what we've got here. Okay, so now we've got a new gasket installed. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. Now, there's a couple things. You need to make sure that the wires do not get pinched. You could even zip tie these. Uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do, actually. Nice little zip tie here. I'm just gonna go around this back side and add that zip tie to this guy right here. Just right here, I'm gonna come down on this first uh, rib. Okay, and that'll make sure that the uh, wires don't, I'm not doing it super tight. I just wanna keep them from getting pinched. All right, so now I've got this here. I'm gonna tighten that up. This is the uh, same quarter inch that we used for the pump. Not too tight, you don't wanna tear the hose. Now I can take this and drop it into the tank. So I'm just gonna kinda squish those down around the sides. Uh, this is a tight fit, really, really tight fit. Gonna have to move. It's gonna take a little bit of effort to make this go in here. And then just it's a matter of manipulating this uh, siphon piece to, to clear. There we go, just a little twist. Ah ha ha! Yay! Now we can feed the wires. Okay, so you just kind of gotta work these uh, these in here. There we go. That's one. It's a very tight package, so which is nice, but it does make a few things a little more tricky. So there I got that. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these wires around the front side so I can make sure that they are inside of the gasket here and that we don't have any wires getting uh, compressed. Because um, you also, if you have a wire that's hanging up in between the top hat and here, not only can you have a leak, but you also can have a wire that's rubbing up against the uh, edge of the, the metal that we cut earlier on the tank. I'm go ahead and use my uh, nylon tool to push the wires in and down just a little bit. Just make sure that I've got them in a good place. You just want to make sure you do a good job. Just make sure to keep everything safe. Okay, looking in here, it looks good. All right, now I should, this should just drop right down in there. And the tricky part on this is getting it so that the, uh, so that the studs go through the hole. Let me see if I can get the camera up closer. Okay, so what, just trying to get, I'm really close. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna take one of the original nuts and I'm just gonna drop it on here. If this is a uh, 3 8 well, I'm not gonna do that one. It's gonna be a little tough for that one. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this one to pull through. If I can, then I'm gonna use it to get started. But the my my uh, my stud ring has fallen down a little bit, and this is this socket's too big. Um, that's gonna be too big. So I just, I'm just using that to get it started. I just want the edge of it. There we go, now I got it starting to pull up. Get one on this one. We're gonna throw this in here, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Red Dirt Rods. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you later. Let's make magic.